In this video, I want to show another powerful thing that you can do by uh, casting network modeling in the same uh, way as we have previously been doing uh, factor modeling, such as uh, structural quasi models. And that is by using multi group models. So, in structural quasi modeling, you can use multi group models to test for homogeneity between parameters uh, or parameters between groups. And we can do the same in network models. We can test if two uh, edges are equal across groups using a multi-group comparison. Now, uh, what I want to show in this video takes one step further and takes it to the easy model, where we can see that using uh, multi-group analysis, we can actually make the temperature parameter in the easy model identified. That's a very new and powerful thing. Now, I have to warn you, this is a, a new thing. It's a, a, an example of analysis that's very uh, rough still and uh, very new, so we have not paper on this yet. It's just to show you a bit of the potential of what you can do, uh, also with the psychometrics package. Before that, I'll take a step back and introduce you to uh, Jonas de Legge, who um, is, uh, was a PhD in our group and also postdoc uh, for a very long time. He also founded the Psychological Network Amsterdam Summer School. Uh, he teaches the network analysis class in, uh, in our research master program, and he did a lot more. This is uh, Jonas de Legge. Uh, and this is actually Janus on the day that he got his uh, doctoral, uh, uh, doctoral title. This is a uh, Dutch uh, PhD commission. Uh, unless uh, there's a global pandemic, then the PhD commission is on Zoom. But this is what it normally looks like. And this is uh, Janus' dissertation, which you can find online. And it's a very nice uh, dissertation to read. And Janus uh, did his um, dissertation on attitude networks. In particular, he was interested in using attitude networks to explain uh, how, uh, why certain attitudes cluster strongly together and also to explain uh, polarization as well. And, and what he found was that the more uh, strongly opinionated people were on an attitude object, for example, uh, Obama here is an attitude object, the more strongly connected their attitude network was of uh, attitude elements. For example, I think Obama is a good president. I think Obama is a good uh, father, things like that. And uh, he found this uh, multiple times that there is this very strong relationship between connectivity and uh, the impact people, um, an attitude object has. And he used that to formalize a mathematical theory for attitude formation, which is an extremely powerful thing. And I can highly recommend you to read uh, some of these beautiful papers that also are chapters in the dissertation. And this he did with the easy model. So there we have the easy model. I'll zoom in. There we have the easy model. And he used the easy model to uh, formalize a theory for uh, attitude formation. And rather than stating uh, the easy model changed in the density or the connection strength, he used this one parameter that we've so far ignored, this beta parameter, which is the inverse temperature. So the higher beta, the more frozen a system is. Uh, the lower beta, the more hot a system is. And in physics, uh, a hot system is a system where particles move a lot. A frozen system is a system where everything is fixed on one side. If you generate data under an easy model, then with low uh, beta, you get a, a more unimodal distribution. But with a high beta, you get a more bimodal distribution, which you can also see as a polarization in attitudes. So like a lot of people say either yes or no. And this you see a lot with people that have very strong opinions to strong impactful attitude objects, like uh, Trump, for example, or Obama. Many people either like uh, agree on a lot of things or um, they say yes or no on a lot of things. And this will also give you a more polarized uh, society if everybody has these very strong attitude networks that are, if you will, like frozen in a very powerful everything is on state or everything is off state. And then also Jonas uh, talks a lot about how these attitude networks can, uh, or can then describe this kind of polarized behavior where you can give information to people, um, but it takes a long time for them to switch their opinions. So you have this beautiful cusp catastrophe here where this is information, uh, and this is the total number of active attitude elements, basically the sum score, how many times you say yes to a question, and this is your involvement. And it turns out on the front of this cusp, this is the behavior of the easy model uh, under certain assumptions. You have this uh, bipolarized effect where you need to 
and give a lot of information, convince people a lot to make a switch to the other side. Uh, so in this state here, with the same information, people are either very against or very uh, forward. Where at the back, this is more of a linear behavior. And this is then used to explain a lot of uh, attitudes uh, people might have to very strong uh, opinions as well. And uh, a nice thing uh, also, uh, perhaps a very uh, recent thing, is that you can also think about this with people's attitudes toward coronavirus uh, regulations, where there's a lot of involvement. So people went very quickly to this side. And then you also see very polarized societies emerging with a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of um, like uh, demonstrations and, uh, and things like that. So this beta parameter um, is what's important in simulating models. And it's important in uh, physics as well. People generate easy models by turning this beta parameter. But for us, this beta parameter was not important because we could not estimate it because it was not identified. Actually, the higher this thing is, the lower these, uh, and you set the thresholds in the network parameter lower, then you get the same solution. Now, it turns out that with multi group estimation, you actually can estimate the beta parameter in an easy model. Right? So, if that's what you're interested in, and in this case, in this particular case with the uh, edited models, that made a lot of sense, the beta parameter was very interpretable, then that might be a thing that you want to uh, look at. So. Uh, for Jonas's PhD defense, as a sort of surprise, we gathered uh, data uh, on an edited object and we thought, well, we might as well gather data on uh, the edited object of, of Jonas uh, de Leffe, which is, uh, is him. So we asked uh, a question online on, uh, on Twitter and also on the friends and families of Jonas and know Jonas well, which was basically asking the question, this is Jonas, he's a researcher from Germany who is now becoming a PhD in psychology. And uh, we showed a few pictures of Jonas. Might not have been the best representative pictures of Jonas, but there are pictures of Jonas. So if you don't know Jonas, now you have an idea of Jonas. And then we asked, how familiar are you with Jonas? So are you, uh, you have no idea who this is, you're vaguely familiar with Jonas, or you know him very well. And then we asked some questions that were basically derived from uh, previous work on attitude objects, such as uh, Jonas is a good scientist, uh, really cares about people like you, would solve our economic problems, is hardworking, is honest, uh, uh, wears beautiful jeans, things like that. We got our data on, uh, on, uh, uh, on, via email with uh, friends and family of Jonas, also on Twitter and Facebook and social media. And we got NS215 responses, which is, is not a lot, right? So probably if you want to do this seriously, you want uh, more than this. But uh, hey, it's, it's, it was nice, I was pretty happy with it. But uh, quite a nice distribution of people that knew Janos and uh, don't know Janos. So uh, this data we actually put in the psychonetic specs as well. So you can play around with it. And it's, of course, a very big convenient sample. This is in no way a publishable story or anything. But it's a small fun data set that you can play around with and look at yourself, what, uh, what you can do with it and what kind of networks you can estimate from it. All right, so uh, then uh, we use the psychometrics package to estimate different models. And these are all uh, multi-group models. We either did two groups or three groups. Uh, two groups where we basically said, uh, you don't know Jonas or you do know Jonas. And three groups where we made a distinction also between if you knew Jonas very well or not. And then you can do a lot of things like equality constraints. So you can put equality constraints on the networks or on the thresholds or on this beta mate, uh, as well. And at some point, this beta becomes uh, uh, identified and you can actually estimate it. Now you can do that, you get different degrees of freedom and you get AICs and BICs. And then one thing you can look at is the lowest BIC value. If you know a bit about model comparison, the lowest BIC value is usually the best and then you can pick a model like that. So in this case, we did that and it turns out that the models in which uh, beta was different across groups, but the network structure was the same, fitted the best. This you can actually translate to something called the posterior model probability, uh, which showed that this uh, model uh, 6 and this model 14 in this case were the best fitting models. And these were both the models where the network was sparse, they were equal across groups, the intercepts were equal across groups, but the temperature differed across groups. And um, if you read John's dissertation, this is actually exactly in line with his prediction, which is nice. So then, uh, we looked at differences in uh, this uh, beta, and it turns out that indeed the people that know Jonas have a uh, 
lower temperature or a higher beta value than the people that don't know Jonas. So that's uh, in line with uh, predictions of his work. And then you can also look at this uh, pool network structure, uh, this pool network structure across groups, which is this uh, single uh, network structure that we estimated then for Jonas, where the temperature is different across groups. So the example with Jonas is just a uh, fun example, but there's a data set to play around with the psychometric system one. But of course, we can apply um, multi group analysis also to a bit more serious cases. And we discuss a bit about this in this preprint on meta analytic Gaussian network aggregation, where we discuss multi group Gaussian network estimation and what you can do with it. And uh, one example we show, for example, are these uh, four data sets from uh, a paper, an earlier paper, I complete. Uh, from four very different samples of, on PTZ symptoms, where you can estimate a network per group, uh, per sample, but the sample size is not that big. So you might get a few differences in these networks, uh, which are to be expected. And then we show that with uh, multi-group estimation, you can also estimate a network structure where part of the edges are uh, constrained equal across groups and uh, other edges not, where you can get a uh, much more um, homogeneous network structure, but still with a few edges being very different, which you will probably expect, given how uh, yeah, veterans are, for example, very different type of uh, uh, traumatic experiences than uh, earthquakes and fires and things like that. So uh, that you can read up in this uh, this paper that we've submitted for publication uh, on meta analytic gas and network aggregation. Okay, and that's it for this video on multi-group models in uh, network psychometrics.